Hey guys, Long here, about another math video. Today we're going to be tackling a pretty hard math problem. It's going to have a very long proof, so I won't be able to explain everything in detail. Uh, before you start the video, um, well, here's the math problem first. We're going to be proving the alternating harmonic series. So, uh, what does this equal to? That's that's the question. Or if, uh, well, yeah, that's that's the question. Um, that's it seems simple, but it's not so simple. So, to do this question, just some hints, and for you to like understand the video, you should know what induction is and uh, some basic integration, and maybe if you know this, it'll help the ream in some. Um, so without further ado, pause the video if you need to, um, and we're going to just go into this really long proof. So the first thing we want to do is a pretty obscure step. We want to prove that 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4 dot 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 to 1 over plus 1 over 2n minus 1 minus 1 over 2n equals 1 over n plus 1 plus 1 over n plus 2 plus 1 over n plus 3 dot 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 plus 1 over 2n this is like already hard to prove um, we need to use some induction and to use and to use induction we're going to first put this into sigma notation to just like just like condense it right so uh, sigma notation will be equals 1 to the n over 1 over 2i minus 1 this n 1 over 2i equals n 1 over i plus n so that's what we're trying to prove and we're going to prove this using induction. So there's two steps to induction. Of course, you need the base case or base case, base case n equals one. And basically, induction is just like you prove a base case, and then you prove that the that the it, that it's this in this this expression holds uh, if you increment n by one. So like if you prove a base case that's true for n equals 1, and you prove that it's true if you increase n by 1, then you've proven that's true for n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, and so on, and you've basically proven the expression. So that's what induction is. So to prove a base case, we're going to go uh, just n equals 1, and that's this goes to 1 over oops, 1 minus 1 half equals 1 half. And that's 1 half equals 1 half, so base case works. Now that's the easy part. Now here's the hard part, the inductive step. Step. So given that the expression is true, uh, prove that expression is true for n plus 1. So if you increase n by 1, the expression should still hold true. And that way you you basically prove it for n equals 2 and then subsequently n equals 3, etc. So that's the inductive step. So the thing we have to prove is, is 1, n plus 1, 1 over 2, i minus 1, minus i plus 1, n plus 1, 1 over 2, i equals i equals 1, n plus 1, over 1 plus n plus 1. I mean, i plus n plus 1. That's what you have to prove, because we just increased n by 1. That's what you have to prove, but we're given that this is, we're given that this is true. So if you're not unfamiliar with induction, uh, I recommend you learn it first before watching this video. It's a bit strange way to prove things, but it's pretty powerful. So we're going to keep going, trudging along with this proof. Um, so this is basically, since we just increased these sequences by 1, it's basically like the old sequences, like equals 1 n 1 over 2 n minus 1 minus i equals 1 n 1 over 
two uh, oh, I two I for both of them I screwed up um, and then since you increase the sequence by one you just plug in n plus one because um, that's the last term of the sequence and you just increase the sequence by one so one term so you just add the last term of the sequence since we took out the plus one here we have to add the last term of the sequence the last term of the sequence is going to be 2n plus 1. And the last term of this sequence is going to be uh, 1 over 2n plus 2. Because you plug in n plus 1 into this equation, and you get 1 over 2n plus 2. This is what you get. We're given this, we're given this, we're given this, right? We're, we're given this, in because it's induction, right? So we can substitute this in for uh, the right side, so that would be I equals one and one over I plus N plus one over two N plus one minus one over two N plus two. And we have to prove that's equal to this. So how do we do that? It's sort of hard. Um, yeah, you know, it is hard. So Let's 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 go through this step by step. So first thing you want to do is you want to notice that uh, this thing right here is equal to i equals one n plus one uh, one over i plus n. That's pretty cool because this this is just the term you would get if you plugged in n plus one. So by adding another term onto this onto the series, you can make you just get this. It simplifies down into uh, series ser series series with one additional term, and this is the last additional term, minus one over two n plus two. And this is where it gets hard because, like, uh, you have to first of all, we increase both uh, this and this by one. So we're going to take out the first term while put well okay I'll just do this so n plus 2 i equals 2 1 over i plus n so what do we do this term now has an extra this this series now has an extra term that we just added at the end which is what happens when you put in n plus 2 right here so now we have to take out that extra term and that extra term is 1 over 2n plus 2. So minus 1 over 2n plus 2. And we have a minus 1 over 2n plus 2 here. So we do it again. 1 minus 2n plus 2. So we subtract 1 minus 2n plus 2 twice. Because we 1 from the previous thing. And 1 because we added 1 over 2n plus 2 when we increased n by 1. When we increased n plus 1 by 1. What we did was... This is i uh, i equals two now, so we ignore the first term of the series, and the first term of the series was if i equals one, and that's if that was one over n plus one. So since we ignore the first term of the series, we subtracted the first term from here. We have to add the first term from here, which is this, right? Uh, yeah. So that's pretty cool because. Give it, now we have this, right? We have minus 2n plus 2, minus 2n plus 2, and we'll plus 1 over n plus 1. This, uh, oh no, I ran out of room. So this simplifies to 0 because 1 over n plus 1 is equal to uh, 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over 2n plus 2 minus 1 over 2n plus 2 equals 0. So you could just do the basic math on that. So we're left with this i equals 2n plus 2. 1 over i plus n. I don't like those twos. Let's let's take them out. So we're gonna sh we're gonna we're gonna basically uh, turn this into this. We're gonna shift the entire. We're gonna shift the entire series over. I don't know how much room I have. Uh, I probably shouldn't go on that side. I don't want to risk anything. I want it going off screen on you guys. So we're going to go over here. So we're going to shift the series over, and this actually equals, uh, I think it equals i equals 1, 
n plus 1 of 1 over i plus n plus 1. Because we subtracted, we basically subtracted uh, 1 from, we basically subtracted 1 from every term of the series, right? By making i equal 1 instead of i equal 2, we basically shifted the entire series over, and we also subtracted 1 from the top. We shifted the entire series over uh, by one term. So, but we then shifted it back by adding a 1 here. So we moved the entire series over by one term, making it i equals 1 to n plus 1. But we added, but we then shifted it back again to, we shifted it back again by adding a 1 here. Sort of hard to imagine, I'm not explaining it very well, but it's the best I can do. Um, so like if the first term was i equals 2, you plug in a 2 here, so that would be like n plus 2. Uh, now the first term is i equals 1, and you plug in a 1 here, so it would be n plus 1. But then we add a 1 to make up for that. So it works. And this is the same as that, right? It's the same as the thing we wanted to prove, n plus 1, uh, i equals 1 to n plus 1 over 1 over i plus n plus 1. That's the thing we wanted to prove, so we proved the inductive step. And since we proved the base case, we proved this, we proved this identity uh, using induction. Wow, okay. So, that, that took, that took a long time. And now we're gonna, we're gonna erase all this. I hope you got it, because, because we still have, we still have a, a, a bit left to go. So I'm just gonna delete that. And still a lot down here. So I'm just gonna delete that. All right. So in order for us to do to get to, so we want n to equal infinity because this sequence goes on forever, right? So we want to solve for as n approaches infinity, and this equals that. So uh, as n approaches infinity of one over n plus one plus one over n plus two plus one over n plus three, and so on forever. That's, that's, yeah. Um, and you know what? That's, that's pretty hard to prove unless you use something nifty called a Riemann sum. So we do this. Infinity. And we divide every term by n. Every term by n. We divide everything by n. And this term divided by n, uh, would be 1 over 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 over 1 plus 2 over n plus 1 over 1 plus 3 over n dot 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 1 over 1 plus n over n wow okay that's what we're left with and this is what we call a Riemann sum it's coincidentally a Riemann sum now I'll tell you what the Riem what the Riemann what this is the Riemann sum of this is the Riemann sum of this expression and what is a Riemann sum, you ask? Well, if you've taken, uh, like, you know how integrals work. You know that this is basically, let's try to draw out the function. So 1 over 1 plus x. So at x equals 0, it's going to be at 1. So 1. And then the equation sort of goes like this. And then it goes from 0 to 1. So it goes to 1 half. I think it's, oh, I, I did it wrong. Never mind, I was joking. Uh, goes like goes to one half, so it's like zero, one, and then it goes like like this, sort of. And what the Riemann sum is is for given a Riemann sum of sum of n, I should Riemann sum of n. Basically, given a number a Riemann sum of like given n, it's like the number of rectangles that you can like fit under here, assuming they're evenly spaced out. So an integral is just the area under the curve, right? Well, Riemann sum is basically of, of a certain number. It's basically like having a, that number of rectangles evenly spaced under the curve. So we have n rectangles. And, and the 
and the sum of the areas of these rectangles is the Riemann sum. So if we have n rectangles, the width of the width of these rectangles would be one over n, because th this entire thing is one, right? This entire thing is one, and you have n rectangles. So this this distance, the width of the rectangles, must be one over n each. What's the what's the height of these rectangles though? Well, the height of these rectangles is just the function at each of these the f the f of f of uh, each of these points. And each of these points is one over n. Uh, sorry, one over n f of I wrote these wrong. Two over n. So this is one over n, two over n, three over n, right? These points are one over n, two over n, three over n, and the f and f of that is just the height of the rectangle because that's the y coordinate, right? So this is f of one over n, f of two over n. That's those are the heights. So heights f of one over n for the first rectangle. That's this rectangle f of 2 over n, that's the second rectangle, that's the height of the second rectangle because the f of 2 over n is just the y coordinate and that's the height and so on. So if you if you multiply the if you multiply these together you get like 1 over n and we know the function, the function is 1 over 1 plus x so you get, so you get 1 over 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 over n 1 over 1 plus 2 over n and so on and that's that's equal to this wow that's that's equal to that that's a coincidence so what happens when n equals infinity when n equals infinity these, tri these as you can see if n is like a finite number we get a little bit of like extra space space so like they're, they're, the, the, the sum of the areas of these rectangles are exactly equal to the area under the curve. But if n is infinity, then these rectangles are infinitely close together. And then, uh, and then, and then guess what? It does equal to the area of the curve. So if limit n, n goes to infinity of this is equal to the area under the curve, which is, which is, equal, to, which is equal to that. Because the area under the curve is equal to the integral. Right? So there's two ways to find the integral. You can use this, the Riemann sum, Riemann sum, and you can use the just the integral function. So we've proven that this harmonic expression is equal to the Riemann sum of this, which is then equal to this. Well what is this? Well it's easy now, you just it's just a regular integration. So it's just uh it's just the integral of this is ln 1 plus x from 0 to 1. So you get ln 2 minus ln 1, which is ln 2. And we solved it. We proved that the alternating harmonic series is equal to the this expression right here, whatever the, the whatever that is, which we proved using induction, which we proved is equal to uh, the area under the curve of this this function, and that's natural log of two. Whew, quite a problem. I hope you enjoyed it. It's, it's certainly interesting, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. About this. So if you have a geometric series, you know, with these terms, it. The each number after the number before it will have the same ratio as the number before it. So times two, times two. This is a geometric series.